guys, I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and if you don't celebrate it, I hope you had a really good 25th. So today is, is going to be a book talk as you can tell by the title. I just want to quickly say I'm sorry if you hear any background noises, that would be my parents and also the washing machine because it's such a sunny day, it's washing day. Um, I also want to say that this the book talk on Let It Snow will be separated into three parts. So it will be a mini series just because of the story. It, it's a it's a three. They're three separate stories, pretty much. And I just think that would be the best way to deliver a book talk about these to just separate them. I'm not too sure if I will continue doing book talks after this series. I just want to test the waters and see what I do and don't enjoy doing. And I do apologize if this is not a very good book talk as it is my first one. I've done a lot of planning, but now it's just time for me to get it done. Okay, so the first uh, story of Let It Snow is The Jubilee Express by Maureen Johnson. I am rating this story five stars. I think it is really, really good. And so I'm just gonna jump into a summary. The Jubilee Express is about, well, Jubilee. She thinks that life is going her way and she's about ready to go to her boyfriend's to celebrate Christmas with him on Christmas Eve. Until there's a knock at her door from the family lawyer and she finds out that her parents have been arrested. So she has to go on a train to spend Christmas with her grandparents in Florida. However, they only make it so far into Gracetown before the train crashes into snow and they are not sure when they will be back on the track. So she has the option of staying in a freezing cold train and possibly not even get to Florida by Christmas or she can go off into Gracetown and see if she can get something warm to eat before hopping back on the train. However, while she is in the Waffle House, a very nice stranger who is around the same age as her says, hey, why don't you spend Christmas with my family? And so she goes and spends Christmas his family and there is some really good plot lines in here that I don't want to spoil just because I think it is something that you should go into with a bit of an open mind and if you have watched the movie it's fine because I'm not sure with the other ones because I haven't read them yet but with the first story it's nothing like the movie <laughs> However, I might be a bit wary about it just because it's not separated into three stories. Okay, so my overall thoughts and opinions. If you see me looking in that direction, that's just because my laptop is there and it has my notes. So I think that this is a very short and sweet story. It doesn't go for a lot for a very long, goes for like 119 or so pages. It's about 11, 11 chapters, so it's a short story, but it is still really good. Um, Maureen Johnson has amazing writing. She is so good at giving the characters as much personality as possible, even if they are just like a side character, which is so good and quite rare nowadays. Um, there was a bit, it was a bit lacking in character growth just for anyone that wasn't Jubilee. They didn't lack in depth though, and they still had lots of personality. So that was still very good. A bit of a shame, but again, it's a short story. It will be hard to pack all of that in there. So that's all right, and I'm perfectly okay with that. It would just be nice to see a bit more growth for the other characters. Um, it was so funny and so well thought out with the humor. There are some brilliant references to, um, to some very popular pop culture, which I thought was very funny. Jubilee has such a witty sense of humour and I'm so glad that we were in her head for the story. Um, I find that Jubilee and the boy that helps her out, um, I thought they absolutely shined in this book. I thought they were brilliant, absolutely. Sorry, my laptop's turning off just then. Um, so... There is, as I said, very funny, lots of personality. I reckon that there is a lesson in here that is very good for young people and people in their 20s, maybe even people who are older. Again, you're not too sure about their experiences. It very much teaches you about your own personal value, letting you know that you are worth a certain 
you are worth a lot in a way i don't want to spoil the lesson just like that's not even the entire lesson it goes throughout the story it is done in such a brilliant way it's best to go into it a bit blind in my opinion so that is really all i can say about it without going into spoilers so that's that was the non-spoiler part i'm so sorry that is so short but yes please pick this up it is so good it you don't even have to read it around christmas time it's past christmas and i've not even finished the book so go ahead pick up the book read it it is really good okay bye non-spoiler people bye bye <laughs> So, I thought Noah was a prick. I'm sorry, my language. He is so mean. Um, as you guys probably think so too, he did not care one bit about what Jubilee was going through. Like, she fell into a frozen creek and he didn't even ask if she was okay. He just said, oh, um... I'll call you back in like one or two hours. Doubtful, he probably was gonna call her back the next day. Oh, he's so cruel. So it was interesting reading about their relationship and this is the pretty much the lesson that I was referring to before, which I think you guys would have figured out as well considering that you read the story. I thought that was such a good lesson. Pretty much um, like Noah, is has lost interest in jubilee which does happen and that is okay but what he is doing is wrong he's avoiding her he's not talking to her he's taking her to things that he likes to do and not doing the stuff that she likes to do there is even a part in the book where um where he has taken her to go sit in the front at a basketball match but she's scared of that because she once copped a ball in her face so she doesn't want to sit in the front and he doesn't care. He will pull her along through the corridors of high school. That was weird saying, because I'm from Perth, we say hallways. Um, and he doesn't actually talk to her, he talks to everyone else. She sits with him and his friends and just listens to them talk about stuff that she's not interested in. And there is even that imbalance in their relationship that you see straight away, which is basically that she puts him on a pedestal. And you can tell that he doesn't express that same th those same thoughts about her to her. I'm not saying that he didn't put her in a pedestal. We're actually not too sure. It is quite obvious in the first like memory of them and their first Christmas together that he definitely was interested in her and he definitely did care a lot about her. It's just that now he's lost interest and he's doing it in a terrible way. Um, but it's pretty obvious straight away like i'm pretty sure she refers to him as a prince when she first talks about him he she goes on about how amazing he is how awesome he is but she does it in a way which is very much um yes men it's very different from like how i say how like my me personally i go like oh my boyfriend's really sweet i love him so much and i'll talk about him the same way you talk about your best mate um because your partner it should be your best friend but she goes on about him as if she as if he is this celebrity and there is even this part in um in the book where i'll see if i can find it Here it is, so I'm just gonna go and quote from here if I find it. Noah Price was just a star in my sky, constant, familiar, bright, and far above me. I'd known Noah since the fourth grade, but it felt like I knew him in the same way that I know people on television. I knew the name, I watched the show. Sure, Noah was a bit closer than that, but somehow when it's real, when it's your life, that person can feel even farther off and more unobtainable than an actual celebrity. Proximity doesn't breed familiarity. So, to me, that kind of told me a lot. It basically was just saying that she feels far away from him. She also, it shows that she doesn't actually feel worthy of being with him if that makes sense as well and i think that is a sign of is an evident sign of 
lack of self-worth for poor Jubilee. And I'm so glad that she overcomes that and realizes that she deserves so much more in a relationship than what Noah gives her. And I think that it was just, it was such an interesting lesson, like I was saying before. He, sorry, I'm moving around a lot. It's very hot and I turned off my fan. Um, so I think that is a very, it's very relatable because there are lots of people have, who have been in that situation. I know that before I've been dumped by one of my exes, he completely ignored me for about a week maybe even two weeks and the entire time I thought that I had done something wrong I was just very much like are you serious kind of situation and I know that everyone who has been through that I've done it before I broke up when I broke up with my first boyfriend I ignored him for about two weeks before we broke up and looking back at that now I'm like oh my god that isn't okay so I can see that in there like that's very relatable for the person who's broken up with and also for the person who has broken up with someone and has done that before breaking up with them so I think that is actually a very good lesson it teaches both parties that that isn't okay that you deserve so much better than that or they deserve so much better than that and if you do think that it is time to end it that you really should just say so or try and fix the problem but communication that's important it's also pretty obvious that they don't have much communication um for a bit you could tell that a big part in jubilee's life is noah and it looks like she's not a big part in his life. There's that imbalance. They don't have much communication. The entire, like, we don't actually see much of them together besides in memories, but we do get a lot of their exchanges over the phone. And then, well, it's not even much of a conversation, to be honest. Uh, he doesn't really care about what she's going through. He's rather self centered and just wants to celebrate Christmas and just like push her away he constantly brushes her off he kind of seems relieved that she wasn't going to be there for christmas eve which again makes sense because he doesn't want to spend christmas eve with her even though he promised that they would have time together because that's actually their anniversary if you guys remember and so like ah uh, where is it i'll find it it's in the second chapter um, so when, when they're on the phone and she's telling him about what has happened, that she's on the train and won't be able to make it, it goes, he refers to it as one of those things. So he doesn't care that she's going through that, or he cares and is just not showing it because he feels relieved that she won't be there, which is understandable, but that's not okay. So you can tell that he doesn't have much empathy for what she's going through, the fact that her parents have just been arrested, she's on a train on her own, her entire Christmas has just been ruined, and he doesn't care. He's just like, mm, so what? But I thought that was just, it said so much about his character and it was very sad and I just felt really bad for Jubilee. I was very happy when they broke up, not gonna lie. I was so, so immensely happy when she won, told him off and was like, um, like, I just told you that this, 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 and this, and this happened and you're, and you don't even care. And then, she, and he's just like, I know. No, I do care, but you just have to tell me all about it. She's like, I'm about to go somewhere. Can you please, like, call? I'll call you back in, like, one or two hours. And she's like, what? No. And she does call him back, but not in one or two hours later. She straight up dumped him. And I think I thought that was so awesome. I was glad that she took back her power in that situation. It was sad about how it went down. And it was obvious that, again, he didn't care or he didn't express that he cares. And I just thought that would, that must have been so painful for Jubilee. I just, I wanted to go into the book and just give her a hug, which would have been weird because I'm not in the story, so she hasn't met me. <laughs> um, and so there was that. I also think that, well, I reckon, 
I reckon that Stewart played a big part in, well, not even reckon, he definitely played a big part in giving Jubilee that push to dump him. Basically, he was just like, you know why he's behaving like this, right? And she was like, because he's busy. And he said, no, he's going to break up with you. And if not, he clearly doesn't care and you should just break up with him. And then just went on onto why why it's like that, why he sees that in their relationship and how wh how it should be. Um, I'll quickly find it again. Here it is. Well, if I had a girlfriend and her parents had been arrested on Christmas Eve and she had to take a long train ride through a storm, I'd have my phone in my hand all night and I would answer it on the first ring every time I'd be calling her to check on her. Then there is the other part and, Ju and Jubilee agrees with him. She doesn't say it, but she agrees with him in her head and she's starting to realize things and it's just, it's hurting her and she's in a lot of pain, but he's still going and he's still telling her. Plus, you just told him you fell into a frozen creek and you were trapped in a strange town and he hung up? He did. I'd do something. I'd get down there, snow or no snow. Maybe that sounds stupid, but I would. And if you want my advice, if he isn't going to break up with you, you should dump his ass. Go Stu. <laughs> I love Stuart so much. He is such a great character. But... It's true, he knew it straight away and basically he gave her that push that she needed to dump him. And I was just so great, I was so happy. And then when it did happen, he comforted her. She was an absolute badass while dumping him. I thought it was so amazing. I had never read or heard anyone say Merry Christmas in such a passive aggressive way. Like, yes, queen, you do that. That is amazing. Um, I just thought that was a I just think that was very good. Um, so I don't like Noah one bit. I think he is a prick. That's just summarized for you there. So now Jubilee and Stuart, I didn't know they were going to get together at the beginning. I thought maybe they would be just like, they become good friends after this. But I like that it went from, from strangers to friends to kind of lovers. I'm not too sure. The ending was very open. Um, like they're not together together, but they did make out. So it's kind of like, it's now turned into a will they or won't they, you won't know. <laughs> and I actually like that. I think that was very good and realistic for the story as well. I thought Stuart was such a hilarious character. He was definitely the voice of reason and logic. And he had, and he had a... A bit of an inkling that maybe Noah wasn't that good of a boyfriend when he first heard about him basically because how they how him and Jubilee met it was sort of like he could tell she was constantly she got voicemail and all that sort of stuff so it was pretty interesting I love how they first met I thought it was so funny that she was kind of like why is this guy wearing bags on his head and his arms and his hands and so he sat with her because he didn't want to sit next to Tinfoil Guy. I'm so glad that Tinfoil Guy was in this because in the movie, well, it's a Tinfoil woman, but it's just so funny. And I love that he was just like, I'm sorry, like, can I sit with you? I just don't want to sit with him because last time I sat with him, he's a very nice person. We got into a conversation. He just kept talking about cups for about an hour. I thought that was so funny. And how um, she got in a bit of like she she kept kind of like getting a bit too awkward and saying stuff she shouldn't have said and how he was kind of more like okay like I don't know you this is all right I won't I won't be mean about it but she just kept digging a hole basically when I was like so are you here with anyone and she was like oh um I have a boyfriend <laughs> and sorry that was my stomach and so he was just like okay cool this is not what I asked <laughs> and so she felt the need to explain it and then said a bit of a lie that she was supposed to be calling him but she had no bars but her phone was on the table and so you could see that it had a full range of bars which was like 
until right now. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. They had just the best chemistry and they kept bouncing off of each other. Their banter was hilarious and I just thought that was really good. Um, Stuart was very interesting because we got to know him throughout the story even right towards the end. We found out about Chloe quite early on but we didn't know it was actually his ex-girlfriend. More like maybe it was his friend that he has feelings for but is oblivious to it. Maybe it's someone who um, maybe it's his girlfriend and they're having problems because all Jubilee sees is a photo of his um, prom and Chloe, she doesn't know that's her name, but he, she brings he, her up as in like, oh, is that, is that why your girlfriend loves you? And like a little funny joke while they're walking, he gets really weird and kind of just like closes off. Um, I thought he was a very interesting character. I very much enjoyed reading about him. Um, I think it was so great that he was there to teach Jubilee that she is worth a proper boyfriend and not a dickhead. Learn my language. <laughs> um, so that was really good. Sorry, I am so itchy right now because it is so hot and I don't want to put on the fan because it's loud. So yeah, I thought that was really good. I loved the part where they made out. I know it was only like, I don't know, 20 or so minutes or whatever after she broke up with Noah, but in my opinion, they were kind of already broken up. It just wasn't said. Um, but I was like, yeah, you go get it, girl, do that. And I thought it was so funny because there was the part where it was like, it, it wasn't very good kissing. Well, it was, it was just our bodies were like, oh, right, yeah, kissing, moving the mouth. That sort of stuff. I thought that was hilarious and I just like I was pissing myself laughing which probably wasn't too good a thing because I was in public <laughs> and town got busy at around that time but that's okay. Um, I just thought that was a really good lead into a relationship. I do hope they get into a relationship. I don't know if we'll be getting a sequel. I highly doubt it. If you do, that would be awesome, but I think that would be just a great standalone mini story novella, and I just really enjoyed that. The scene where they fell into the creek, I was very concerned about that because that's frozen water and it's midnight and they're in a frozen creek and they're trying to get out and it's like, oh my god, like I know they're not gonna die, but... That is still very scary and I experienced so much secondhand fear from that and like I knew they were going to be okay because Jubilee is the main character and you could tell that he was going to be another one of the main cast characters but it was still terrifying um and then they get there and he's like just like run into the shower go now and she's like yeah and then she hops into the shower and then she comes out and like she's just like cool um that I just thought that was so scary, but I knew they were going to be okay, if that makes sense. Like, sh Maureen Johnson, great at writing scenes like that. I thought that was really good. The la One of the other things that I do want to talk about is their fight. So they get into a fight right before Jubilee breaks up with Noah because Stuart does kind of just go like, you know, like, he's going to break up with you, like I told you earlier, and you would know already because you read it or you're just watching me. Um, sorry, my nose is very itchy at the moment. So that happens and they get into like a fight and it was just so bad. She made a comment on his ex-girlfriend like, you're only doing this because you're still pissed off about, um, about Chloe and he's just like, don't bring that up. He stays still very reasonable and level-headed throughout the argument, and it doesn't actually blow into blow out into one of those like miscommunication. You have a massive fight, so now they hate each other. And she's gonna go run away back to um, back away to the train, and he's eventually gonna realize that it doesn't matter, and then chase after her like in a lot of um, in a lot of romance because I still consider this as a bit of a romance. But I'm glad that that didn't happen. Instead, it was that they calmed down. She got upset and she was like, I just need some space. And it was like, you can chill out in my room. 
And then immediately after the breakup happens, he knows something is wrong and goes up to check on her. And she's just like, I just broke up with Noah. And he's like, it's going to be okay. And so he comforts her and he talks to her and then they make out, but it's okay. I thought the part where they were making out so funny when Debbie Stewart's mom was like, Stewart, I have some cookies from Santa. And then she sees the light under the door and it goes, hee hee hee, Rachel, let's go because um, Stu, and, Stu and Jubilee are playing a game. <laughs> There, she was working so hard to set them up and then it happened like little cupid cupid like go debbie i thought that was awesome i thought debbie was so funny um every single thing she said besides the part where she was talking about chloe but when she was trying to do the thing like he's really sweet and you only live like three hours away that is still a long way but I don't know if there are people who have long distance relationships that are further away and they're still lost. But I thought that part was hilarious. I was dying with laughter and I was like in the lunchroom and my manager was just like, keep it down. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. I liked that. Um, Chloe. I don't like her. I don't like that girl. She was mean to Stuart. She cheated on him with Todd the Cougar and then just went ahead and was like, I did this because you're possessive and you stalked me here and you've been controlling me when really she had been avoiding him and got busier and busier and busier and they were supposed to study together and in his mind it was like oh duh like it was supposed to be at Starbucks and not my place or her place I got that wrong and no she was avoiding him and being a very mean girlfriend now ex-girlfriend and it just it broke his heart but he learned so much from it and that's why he was able to help Jubilee so much and I just really liked that. I was so glad that they ended up like kind of getting together. I'm not too sure if they are together together. It was left, like I said before, left very open. Like the ending is literally that he does run after her and goes like, you just walked in a circle like four times. All I had to do was follow your tracks. You can still chill at mine, like you didn't ruin anything because she thought she ruined stuff by making out with him and I just thought that was so funny. Um, but yeah, like, he, it was just so painful to read that part because he was telling her about something that would have been heartbreaking to experience. Uh, cheating isn't okay, I've never been cheated on. I, maybe I have, I don't know, but like, I can't imagine the pain that that would be, especially because he's just saw the person that she cheated on him with and he was just standing there like, I don't know what to do. And he took it. He took every single horrible thing that Chloe was spewing out of her mouth at him and he took it. Her friend, on the other hand, was like, let's go out, like, let's calm you down because you're going overboard. And he got a free latte and he was like, oh, that was a peck though, I got a free latte. But like, mate, Chloe was just hurting you. That was not on, that's not okay. And it was just so painful for me to read. I was kind of crying and like messing up my makeup before work. It probably wasn't a good idea. I ended up having to go into the bathroom and fix it up like I just had mascara on but it was still under my eyes so that was just very sad to read but it was it adds some really good depth to his character and I'm actually glad that it wasn't the sort of depth that I've been reading lately of like some horribly traumatic experience of actually I don't want to say in case it triggers anyone of like you know what I mean like horrible experiences I'm glad that his step was something more re realistic. Like, not that those sorts of things are unrealistic, it's just more what most people experience. So a larger audience can relate to Stuart in that regard, and another larger audience can relate to Noah, or even Chloe, or Jubilee as well. And hopefully everyone who has read this or reads this will learn some really important lessons. So... That is all for my book talk. I'm sorry, it was so rambly and really not well structured. My laptop just died, so...
that's kind of why I went off on little tangents. I had it all set up perfectly, but it died. It just died. Well, actually, it died really early into the video, so that's why I wasn't bothering looking there. Um, so I hope that was okay and that sufficed. And that if you haven't read Let It Snow, please read it. It is so good. The first story is so good. I'm up to the second story, which is John Green's one, and I'm so excited to read that. I am going to sign off now because it is so hot and I am sweating off my makeup. I hope you all have a lovely day and that you enjoy the rest of it. Sorry, this video was so long. Oh my god, I just realized 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs>